Hey guys and welcome to a brand new Minecraft PSP update video. In this video we're going to be checking out some of the changes made in the recent update. So without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it. But before we do so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment and like on the video. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys in the video. So of course we're starting off with the same old, same old thing as before. Let's go ahead and start our server. I'm now actually using a secondary hotspot, which is over there on the chair. Uh, it's basically connected by ethernet to my PC in the back. Basically, it just allows me to do development while staying connected to my main network without having to start my hotspot. It's a lot more convenient and basically I've got it working. So as you guys can see, we've started the Minecraft server. Of course, I can go ahead and refresh it to ping the server. It's going to take a little bit longer due to the fact that I'm using Ethernet uh, and it has to resolve against Ethernet and the internet itself, but either way, it will go ahead and figure it out soon enough. Now for the things that I've added this week includes some of the specific commands now kicking you and doing stuff like that. So if we go ahead and go onto the PSP server, we can go ahead and order a slash kick command to myself in order to uh, basically kick myself. And the way that it works is slash kick the player uh, with the reason. And give me a second. Pretty much what it's actually going to do is slash kick. And then I'm going to do myself. And what that's going to allow us to do is instead of that, we just get kicked for the reason you were kicked. Um, the same thing happens when you ban people, it does the same exact sort of thing. Uh, I've also added the game mode and uh, toggle downfall commands. Uh, so doing game mode actually goes ahead and uh, sends you the packets to switch to the game mode, but for some reason it's not properly switching yet. I'm not quite sure why, but I'll probably be debugging that soon. So if I went ahead and did game mode creative, it will actually send me the game mode creative packet, but it doesn't really do anything. So that's a little bit weird. But what does do something is if I do toggle downfall, it goes ahead and, as you see, immediately changes to rain. So we can now actually have thunderstorms and rain on the PSP Minecraft server. I can go ahead and do slash toggle downfall again and does that. Uh, it is missing the fading sort of effect, but it's fine for our purposes now. And here's where I'll go ahead and get into sort of the juicy details of what I'm going to be changing. Alright, so my goal for this week is pretty much going to be going ahead and basically creating uh, chunks and the working chunk system. With the update of this week, pretty much I've also added in a bunch of libraries in order to get uh, NBT support, which is named binary tags, which Minecraft uses internally, alongside getting a block registry working, and inventory slots, and data management like that. Pretty much once all of that is in, which already is, I guess, technically, if I'm just saying this now, uh, basically what's going to be having to be done is generating a chunk uh, generating chunk packet data, sending that data to the client, and then basically being able to use that. The other thing that comes along with that is that player movement also becomes a factor once that's completed. Uh, pretty much this is uh, the end goal of this uh, sort of week, is getting chunk generation and lighting, uh, both of which I want to be 100% on the media engine and not tied to the actual server itself. And that way I can actually go ahead and uh, pretty much have all of my chunk generation code naturally on the media engine without me having to basically rewrite all of it, if I'm going to be rewriting it anyways. This way, pretty much everything that I really need to do is done for me, and I'm pretty much certain that once that's done, pretty much everything is going to start to click, because I believe physics is still on the client side, so uh, I don't think I have to manually do anything with uh, changing that sort of side of Minecraft. So I'm not going to have to go ahead and rewrite a physics engine uh, for the server to check. Uh, this does leave us open for hackers and things like that uh, from Minecraft Java Edition, but it's still a lot better than having uh, to basically do a full physics system in the uh, server. This means that basically by the end of the week you should have infinite worlds and working chunk gen for the craft server. That's pretty much what I'm going to be working on, and I might be doing some streams throughout the week working on Minecraft PSP. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, 
please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.